I'm Brianna Simmons and welcome to another episode of Inside SC State. SC State continues to be a popular stop on the Democratic campaign trail. Bernie Sanders and Dr. Ben Carson have visited and now Secretary Hillary Clinton. Secretary Clinton came to SC State as a part of the Get Out to Vote HBCU rally. This rally featured Kay Michelle, entrepreneur Karen Civil, and attorney Star Jones. Secretary Clinton visited the campus a day before the South Carolina primaries. In her speech, she spoke about a number of issues affecting young adults today. I am so happy to be here and so grateful to have this chance to talk with you about what's at stake in this election. And I want to thank Congressman Clyburn for being here with me, for his support, his guidance. And if I am so fortunate enough to be the next president, I'm going to be counting on Congressman Clyburn to help me make the changes that we need in Washington. Let me start with the economy. I happen to think that we've got to create more good-paying jobs. We've got to raise incomes. We've got to give young people chances to start small businesses, to be entrepreneurs, to chart their own future. That's why I've put forth plans about how we can create more jobs in manufacturing, in infrastructure, in clean renewable energy. And we can do that if we set our minds to it. It's also important that we provide more access to credit and more support for small businesses. Everywhere I go, young people say they've got a good idea, but they're burdened down by debt. They don't know how they could ever get the credit they need. We've got to fix that, and I have a plan to do it. We also have to raise the minimum wage. People who work full time should not be left mired in poverty at the end of the year. So I hope that you will join me that you will be part of this effort to build on the progress we've made under President Obama to go further and to make it absolutely clear that we are fighting to break down barriers wherever they may be because we know America deserves nothing less and Americans deserve to have the future that we will create together. Thank you all very much. Karen Silva is a pop culture and media maven who has a heavy presence on social media. Karen also has a lifestyle and entertainment blog called Live Civil, which showcases news and exclusive celebrity interviews. Inside SC State got to speak with her about her support for Hillary Clinton and how we can get involved in this upcoming election. You know, this is the pre-rally for tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. And it's just about getting the young millennials out you know, at the HBCUs to come out and vote. You know, I know what it was like to wear the whole Vote or Die t-shirt back with Diddy when we wanted, um, you know, when when we had our options with Barack Obama and stuff. So it's, it's great to be a part of this. It's, it's great to just come out, speak about politics, see all the young faces, and just, and just see, you know, just us taking a stand. You know, I tell them, you know, now it's, it's much easier. Google is out there. You can see what the candidates are about. You can have the conversations. You can talk to your peers. And, you know, I think it's really just about finding the candidate that best represents you. But the information is out there. It's very easy to get. And I suggest people really just, you know, look to their friends, look to the Internet. There are so many different things and, and outlets that are out there. And you should, you should definitely get involved because this is, this is the year to do that. With so many things happening to us, this is the time where every vote counts and matters. Recently, SC State held its annual Community Higher Education Council Career Expo. Recruiters representing over 70 businesses and industries visited the campus to recruit prospective employees. I had an opportunity to speak with attendees about how this career fair presents an opportunity to build relationships for students and businesses. My whole thing is my major is a phys I'm physical education activity management major and um, I was able to find um, an internship in working with the Charleston County Parks, whatever, and I thought that was real cool because with my major, I want to work on the recreational side, you know, um, doing activities and organizing activities for uh, people at the parks and everything. Okay, I'm an assistant principal uh, with Richland School District 2, that's Windsor Elementary, located in Columbia, South Carolina, and just looking for prospective uh, education majors, of course, you know, teachers. It's a shortage that's coming out across, I think, America, and we're one of the districts that we want to get the best and the brightest, and uh, being a proud alumnus of South Carolina State University, you know, I know what the teacher education program, what they hold here. Just coming and talking, um, giving pointers on what the education process looks like, 
what it is to interview, asking people to use them as a professional reference. There's certain things that you know students they don't know, and it's my job, our job in the field of education to inform kids of every aspect when it comes to teaching and learning and employment opportunities. Being a HBCU graduate, I love that terminology. I'm a, a, a proud graduate of this institution. It makes me go out and pass on what was uh, shared with me at South Carolina State University. I had the opportunity to see Dr. Emily Crawford, one of my former professors, when she was here. And I always remember something that she told me, you know, work hard and strive for the best. I, I want to reference that slogan into one of the professors that's here. He happens to be a cousin of mine, Mr. Leon Myers. You know, those sayings each and every day, SC State has transformed my life. That's over 20 years ago it has made me to this day to still always to look back at SC State University because this is where I got my start. I love South Carolina State. It is the best place that anybody can ever be in. Thanks to the Dr. Huguinis of the world, the Leon Myers of the world, the Shirley Autrys, and the Dr. Willie Woodberries. Those are the people who gave me my start. For more information about career opportunities here on campus, contact Joseph B. Thomas, Director of the Career Center. Stay tuned for your latest celebrity news and gossip with Kay the Media Slay. SC State University is where you will find unlimited possibilities. With more than 70 standout degree programs, students get the kind of education that helps shape them into tomorrow's leaders. Our student life is vibrant with many exciting opportunities and our athletic teams have hearts of champions. SC State University is open for success. Visit us today at scsu.edu. Hey everyone, we're back again with Kate Media Slay, giving you all the news and gaga. So we've all watched the Grammys, correct? A company called Total Beauty made the mistake of posting an image of Whoopi Goldberg on Twitter and calling her Oprah. They quoted, we had no idea Oprah was tatted and we love it. The Total mess up has went viral on social media and they are getting bashed hard. Oprah Winfrey and daughter were shocked to see such a screw up. Now come on, we all don't look alike. Westwood TV. Tim Westwood TV, Capital X, a rich homie yeah. Kwan. Yo, UK, baby. Yes, sir. How you feel? You know what I mean? I'm in the UK. Lord, please save her for me. Natural Road don't do no makeup for me. <laughs> I'll make it rain in every club. Don't guess you got a table for me. Customers, I keep on waiting for me. Shot to swing my way. Woo! Shot to swing my way. Freestyling, it ain't for everybody. Rapper singer Rich Homie Kwan decided to do a so-called freestyle. Rich Homie has been getting roasted ever since he decided to do a 17-minute freestyle on Tim Westwood's show. He took a shot at rapping over Bryson Tiller's exchange instrumental. He also attempted to freestyle over a few other well-known instrumentals. It was a mess. After getting clowned, he responded saying, it was just a freestyle, you idiots, a 17-minute one at that. Your average artist gonna spit a written verse, social media is the devil, but it comes with territory. Either you with me or not. <laughs> It's becoming more apparent that Trump has supporters who belong to hate groups. On Super Tuesday, during Trump's speech, black protesters were thrown out and treated horribly. As they held signs, they were getting pushed and shoved and escorted out. Trump went on about his plan to build the wall between us and Mexico, while African-American women and men were pushed out. We all love our Uber drivers. Whether it's a long day from work or a long night from partying at the clubs, Uber drivers come in clutch on any occasion when you need a ride or just don't feel like driving. 45-year-old Jason Dalton allegedly killed six people and wounded two during an hours-long shooting rampage in the city of Kalamazoo, Michigan. Few said he seemed really normal and quiet. 
The first victim, a woman, was shot multiple times outside an estate called the Meadows Townhomes. About five hours later, he fatally shot Rich Smith and his 18-year-old son, Tyler Smith, who were browsing the brightly lit parking lot of a Kia car dealership, police said. 20 minutes later, Dalton allegedly opened fire on four women parked outside a nearby Crackle Barrel restaurant, killing them all. The shooting also left a 14-year-old in critical condition. The victims appeared to be chosen at random because they were available, Kalamazoo County Prosecutor Jeff Giddings said at a news conference. To college students and others, be careful, be aware, and stay focused of your surroundings. Slay tuned to the next episode with Kata Media Slay. Follow me on IG at nexttop underscore mogul. Coming up, we have Cooler Talk with Malik Jeter, but up next, we have another Bulldog Spotlight featuring student Ashley Freeman. Well, I've always wanted to change people's lives for the better, and when I started here and started taking classes, I feel like it's what I'm supposed to do. My favorite thing about my career is that I can better people's lives. I can rehabilitate and habilitate communication disorders and make people believe that they can do anything they want to do. To date, I think this is my proudest accomplishment. I am very thankful that the faculty and staff here nominated me for this honor and that I can represent our department here at South Carolina State University well. This university has prepared me in my profession because our students have been nothing but wonderful to me. They've taught me a lot among my peers. My faculty has been wonderful. They've taught me a lot inside and outside the classroom and I hope I can take the techniques that I've learned in the clinic and in the classroom and be an SLPA in the future. South Carolina State has been a wonderful university. I've met wonderful people here and it's been a great experience. The faculty and staff instill determination in their students and I feel like it projects. This semester is the first semester I've ever had to work with a child client actually. I've had an adult client and I've had a teenage client so he's been my first experience with a younger client and he needs a lot of like motivation to do well so we he started the high-fiving and I just use it to make him feel like he's doing great in therapy just to ensure that he knows that I'm here for him and I'm here to make him feel better I want to thank South Carolina Speech and Hearing Association for awarding me this wonderful honor of accepting the Jennifer Mungo Student of the Year Award. I'd also like to thank the faculty and staff at South Carolina State University and I hope me receiving this award and accepting this award inspires other students to be determined and be noticed in their department. This is the Cooler Talk with Malik Jeter. Boston Red Sox manager John Farrell stated that Pablo Sandoval lost 20 to 22 pounds since the end of last season. <laughs> well, looks like he gained 30 to 40 pounds back. Talk about a sandwich pick. Pablo came into training camp overweight, but John Farrell seems to not have an issue with it. If he's cool, I'm cool. <laughs> Golden State Warriors superstar Steph Curry continues to dominate opposing defenses. Curry's numbers have taken a huge leap since last year's MVP campaign. His scoring improved from 24 points per game to almost 31 points per game with a 51.5 shooter percentage, which is tied with San Antonio Spurs' Tony Parker. So with more than a month left in the regular season, the question isn't, will Curry win another MVP? But will he be the first player to win it unanimously? Shaq and LeBron each fell one vote shy when they dominated. Forget KD, Anthony Davis, or Westbrook. Curry is making history. A special shout out goes to tight end to Mary Hemingway from Lower South Carolina and defensive tackle Javon Hargrave from Salisbury, North Carolina. Both participated in the NFL Combine this year. Congrats to the both of you and continue to inspire greatness to your fellow Bulldogs. This is the Cooler Talk with Malik Jeter. See you next time.
The School of Business recently featured an SC State alum in their latest executive speaker series. Terrence Head, who is president and founder of Global Outlier Solutions, spoke to students about how he started his own business and how SC State contributed to his success. Yes, I'm Terrence Head. I'm a 2000 electrical engineering graduate of South Carolina State University. I'm the president and founder of Outlier Global Solutions, an executive IT consulting firm based in Washington, D.C. We provide services such as CIO advisory, business transformation, systems engineering, and systems integration. I would say the number one thing is, is that great performance is not an option. It is a requirement to succeed. And having a great work ethic is the equalizer, no matter where someone may come to school from, how much money they may have. A great work ethic is, is free. And as long as you have that, you'll be successful at whatever you try. So there's something called um, bulldog tenacity. And you really don't know what it is unless you come to SC State as a student or maybe work here. As, as an administrator, faculty, or staff. And once you understand what that bulldog tenacity is, being part of the family here, seeing things through, um, having a hard work ethic, and uh, being part of a close bond, that's something that you can take well beyond the gates of South Carolina State University, and, it can, and that can help you throughout the world. And um, that's part of my success story today. When you meet an alum, there's a tremendous amount of pride that you will experience from them. And a lot of people don't understand. They're like, why are you so proud to be from South Carolina State? Well, when you come here, and you go to our games, and you go to the functions within your own school um, or your department here, people have a lot of love for you. And once you leave and get out into the world, you quickly understand that that's not the same way that other cultures in the workplace or other organizations operate and so it's a really unique type of experience. I've been a part of many different engineering societies and been on boards and being from South Carolina State is something that I just can't compare anything to. But to come back today as a speaker in the executive uh, speaker series, <clears throat> I felt the need to present the business school with a check. I did not feel right coming here today empty-handed and I hope that um, other uh, alumni and other speakers do the same thing. Thank you for watching this episode of Inside SC State. I'm Brianna Simmons. Continue to support SC State with the Home Depot Retool Your School Campus Improvement Competition by voting at retoolyourschool.com and use the hashtag SCState underscore RYS16. As always, remember SC State University is transforming lives and inspiring greatness.